In this video, I want to review how you can clean and optimize CAD files to be used specifically for a layout tool. And the reason I'm doing this video is because a lot of times when drafters model a drawing, what they're doing is they're modeling it to eventually print out on some sort of PDF uh, and put into this white paper space for printout. And they do some sort of formatting to make it look like a nice printout of the model itself. So therefore, the size of the file and the elements in the file aren't really that critical if they're just simply printing it out. They are critical, however, if you're trying to take a digital file and put it onto a tablet that has a probably a weaker CPU and a weaker graphics card and less RAM than the computer the drafter is using. So therefore, there's a lot of tips and tricks that have been developed that can optimize a CAD file, and that's what I want to talk about today. So the file I'm going to be working with is this file right here. You can see that it is a 32 megabyte file. And within the file, you can see I have a lot of blocks and other elements within the, within the drawing. But I'm going to be hopefully optimizing this for the interior finished wall layout. So all the walls I hope to lay out with this drawing. So the first thing that I do is I actually save the file as a different file name. So I'm not going to ruin any of the modeling that I've already done. So I'm going to save this as my clean version onto my desktop. Now that it's saved as a clean version, I know that I can do whatever I want to this without ruining any of my actual modeling that's saved in the original file. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the zoom extents command to make sure that there's nothing in the external areas of the model space uh, that might make the drawing look really, really small when it's brought in. And just to give you an example, uh, if I was to have a line out here, let's say I did some modeling out here, and I went and I wanted to just have this drawing on my tablet, if I did zoom extents and I loaded this onto my tablet, the tablet's going to have all of the drawing elements brought in with it. And so the drawing is going to look really small over here on the right. And this line work over here on the left will show up as well. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just delete any external line work that you know isn't part of your actual layout. So that way you're left with just the model that you need to lay out. The third thing I typically do is I go to my layers. So I'm going to type layers in the bottom. And I'm going to simply unlock all the layers of the drawing. And the reason for that is because I'm going to be working with and cleaning as much as I can. And as long as the layers are unlocked, it'll let me work with all of them. So I'm going to just make sure that all my layers are in the unlocked phase. If they were locked, all I would have to do is to sort them by locked and unlocked, highlight the ones that are locked and unlock them. Now, if you're an experienced CAD user and you know that there's some layers that you don't need to mess with and you don't need to clean, you can leave those locked, sure. But just keep in mind that if you are going to be doing a full cleaning on your CAD file, get everything unlocked. That's typically my best practice. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to make sure that I explode any blocks that I need to explode to be selectable. Um, most of the time when I'm working with Total Station tablets and I want to select line work, if the line work is blocked and locked together in a block, sometimes it's not selectable, depending on the nature of the block or the polyline. So what I like to do is I like to separate all of the blocks out as much as I need to, not all, not always all the way, but enough to where I'll be able to select the line work that's, in, that's important. So I'm going to start by doing that. I'm simply going to go to Q select so I can select all my blocks, which this whole drawing is right now. I'll select all of them and I'll just do a quick explode one time. As you can see, now that I exploded the blocks, you can see that now I have simple line work that I can work with. Some blocks remain, but the original blocks that had everything together are now separated a little bit, and now I can work with the drawing a little bit easier. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze any layers that I know are not necessary to keep on my drawing for my layout. And the reason I do that is because it's going to, freezing layers eventually is going to free up the space of the drawing to make it hopefully less laggy on a weaker computer or on a weaker device that's not spec as high as my device that I modeled it on. So for instance, what I can do is I can type the lay freeze command, as you can see on the bottom, lay freeze. And now I can start clicking on objects I know I'm not gonna lay out with my machine. So some equipment layers, maybe there's some furniture layers on here, but I'm gonna simply walk around this drawing and click on objects I know are not critical to my layout. This could even be dimension layers, like I can delete my dimensions if I don't need them. I can also delete uh, reference callouts, room names, door information, all those things that you might not need for your critical layout, you can actually completely freeze and hide 
for now so that you're not going to be taking up space on the drawing when you go put it on your machine. As you can see, after I've done a layer freeze command, I've removed a significant amount of the drawing that is completely irrelevant to my layout. Now that being said, if you ever freeze something that you actually messed up and you wanted to bring back into the drawing, you can always of course press Control Z to undo a layer you accidentally froze, or you can go back into your layers and simply press the snowflake to bring it back and unthaw it. Freezing a layer does not completely remove it from the drawing, it just hides it temporarily. So that being said, if you prefer to keep your furniture or other elements in the drawing for reference, such as room names, where sinks go, where bathroom elements go, by all means leave them in. I'm just suggesting that you freeze out the stuff you absolutely don't need because that's just extra line work that's taking up space in the drawing that A, might confuse the person laying it out, and B, potentially has the opportunity to lag when using it on a weaker system. Once you've gotten rid of the layers and hidden all the layers that you know you don't need, the next step is to run the overkill command. The overkill command essentially deletes overlaying line work that's duplicated on the drawing. I'm going to press Control A to select the whole drawing, type in overkill, press enter, and I really don't change anything in this dialog box. I just go ahead and press OK. What you'll see is that it'll find every single duplicate lines that are out there and it'll delete whatever is duplicated. I've seen this number be in the hundreds of thousands before, which really saves space in your drawing. In this case, it looks like it found 35 lines that were the same and completely eliminated every single one that was duplicate and only kept one remaining. The next thing to do is to check your line work to make sure that the elements are what you expect them to be. So if I zoom into this little section here, I'm going to highlight over these lines to make sure that they are indeed line work. Typically when you're using a total station tablet, you're able to select a line work and put points at the ends of lines, circles, arcs, etc. If this was a different element such as a wall element, a block element, a polyline element, I might consider exploding that or fixing that to basically make it selectable on a tablet. The next step is by using Q select mode again. We're gonna go back into Q select because in Q select we can see what remaining elements are on our drawing and we can remove or edit them as we need. So I'm gonna type Q select, I'll go to my object types and I'll see that there's this many different object types remaining on my drawing. Some objects such as three point angular dimensions, rotated dimensions, text, etc. those really don't matter. I can leave those, I don't really need to delete those and not take up a lot of space. But I am interested to see what blocks remain. I am also interested to see what polylines remain. Because remember, when I'm using a total station, I prefer to have everything broken down to line work, just lines or arcs or circles, because that way I know it's selectable on, on basic total station software. So I'm gonna investigate really quick by ex examining what blocks remain on my drawing. I'll select all of them. And let me just zoom out to see what's still a block. So I notice this is still a block. Over here we have some blocks. And I'm looking at what these blocks are. As long as they're not things I need to lay out and potentially put points on, I'll just leave them as they are. But if for whatever reason I see something, let's say I needed, um, this isn't the case all the time, but let's say that this arc represented something I needed to lay out from. In that case, I could explode by pressing the X command. I can explode these remaining blocks to break it all the way down to line work again. But I'm not gonna do that for these drawings because I'm realizing that these blocks that I have highlighted that remain are not blocks I need to lay out. They're actually not part of the walls that I'm trying to work with. So to save space, I'm gonna keep them as blocks rather than exploding them to a bunch of different lines and therefore adding more data and space to my file. I'm gonna go back to QSelect again and now let's look at the remaining polylines. That's another concern that I have, polylines. Let's see if there's any remaining polylines that I might need to explode. Let me zoom out. It's saying there's zero polylines remaining, which makes me happy. That means I probably won't have a problem putting points at ends of lines on my software. That being said, most total station software that exists out there can identify the individual line elements of a polyline, but just in case, as long as it's not gonna to explode too many of them, it doesn't hurt to just explode them just to be safe. Now, typically the last thing I do with QSelect is I go and find any remaining hatch elements. Hatch elements are typically decorative elements. They decorate what concrete looks like, what interior of walls look like, what reflective ceiling plans sometimes look like. So depending on your needs, you go to hatch, select all, and you can either, one, explode the hatch. So you see how I have two, two, over 2,000 items selected. I can either, A, explode the hatch if it represents line work that I need to lay out, such as respective ceiling plans, or B, and this is most common, completely delete the remaining hatch work. So if I zoom out, you can see it's got all this hatch work inside these walls selected. Of course, I'm not gonna be laying that out with the total station. So unless I need that there for reference, I can simply delete that hatch and get it out of there. 
that will save space on my drawing. Sometimes the hatch work can save significant space depending on how much hatch work is in your drawing. So the last thing you can do with QSelect is simply investigate the remaining elements of your drawing. So simply go to object type, see what elements are remaining to see if there's anything else that might be in your drawing that you might need to break down the line work. It's gonna be different on a case by case basis, but depending on your drawing. But one example I've seen is that sometimes there's an element remaining called a wall. And a lot of uh, IF drawings include a wall type in AutoCAD. Walls need to be exploded typically and broken down to line work because walls are essentially a, a specific type of block that needs to be exploded. That's just an example, but just keep that in mind. If you ever you have elements in your drawing, you're not sure what they are, you're not sure if they're broken down, just go to check what that object is. Let's, for instance, M text. Let's see what M text is. Select all, see what remains. And I have 522 items of M text remaining somewhere on this drawing. If I zoom in here, I can see that this is considered M text. So if I wanted to delete this text because I don't need it, I certainly could to save space on my drawing. So I'll go ahead and press delete just to get rid of any of those text items that I know that's gonna take up space. So now my drawing is actually looking pretty good. The issue is, is if I go to this layer properties, all of these layers are actually technically still part of the background of the drawing. It's still part of the data of the drawing. If I was to save this drawing, it would still be that heavy 32 megabytes that you saw before. So there's two last things I do to basically make sure that as much data in the background is removed and that all the layers that I've frozen are also completely removed from the background as well. The first command is called the purge command to remove any background data that's not affiliated with any of the visual aspects of the drawing anymore. With purge command, you simply select all the items over here, purge all of them, and it gets rid of all that background data that you don't need anymore, the cache, I guess you can say, that's in the drawing. I'm gonna keep clicking purge all until I'm completely done purging. This eventually will be grayed out when you're completed. You can tell this is my third time purging. Sometimes I've done up to seven times in purge, but now it's gone gray so I know I'm done. Now the last thing I do, and this is probably my favorite step because of how significant it can help, is I run the W block command. W block, basically whatever I highlight, so let's say that this is the drawing that I wanna save. I'm gonna highlight the drawing. It's now highlighted. When I say W block, what happens is that the software is going to take only what it sees, only the elements that are unfrozen, and it's going to save that as its own drawing. All the layers that are frozen are completely removed from it. And I will call this clean version W block. Just remember that this is the one that I finalized. So you can see the size difference in file. I'll say save and press OK. Now to show you the significance of this, if you look, clean an example, Versus, w, the, versus the W block. So this is my original, and here's the one that I just cleaned. That's a significant difference in size. And of course, this one will run a lot smoother on a less heavily specced computing device. And what you'll notice if I open it, it looks just like I W blocked. And in the layers, the only layers remaining are the ones that I kept unthawed. So I hope this video helps you when you are preparing your files for a tablet for layout. It's pretty straightforward and I think that you're going to develop your own system. But again, the concept is simple. Basically make sure that the drawing only has elements that you absolutely need just to make it easier on the people in the field that are laying out. Leave any questions in the comments.